simple little welding fabrication repair job for you guys for today. I got this bracket stainless steel type 316 and they got this notch cut out and they cut it out but it turns out that they didn't need to cut it out so they want to make this new again or whatever you want to call it so stay tuned. Bonarski back again welding fabrication video for you guys today is June 11th I think 2025 and we're out 90 degrees hot and sunny than even Florida but here we go. So back to the video we got to repair this I offered I said what do you want a quick fix so we can either just patch this thing weld it in and grind it down and blend it but you'll see a little grind marks in there probably or we could chop that chop that and add a new angle and just redo it and it'll look pretty much brand new so give those two options and we're just gonna fill in that little piece and grind it down so bring you along for the journey so mainly it's type 316 stainless steel so we got to find a piece of scrap or a piece of plate probably that is 316 quarter inch thick so great to be back for that and actually i actually had the piece already cut out for the video so and then i decided to make a video on it so i'll just show you what i did so just say this was our scrap which it's not and it was marked type 316 you always want to be sure of that so i just laid it down like that brought it to like the corner so that's like less actually i think i brought it up like this so it'd be less two corners i don't have to cut and i just traced around it and then i just cut that out on the notcher over there the iron worker and just chopped it and put a little notch on the corners and then i brought it to the grinder took it with a flap disc and rounded the corners a little bit and i had to grind off a little bit more because i cut it a little big and let's see how our fit is now so pretty good i think got a little gap which is fine that'll give us a little penetration which i don't really have to bevel anymore because we got a little gap and once i grind it down it should be pretty good just i got a little more up going up like that so i just got to be careful if you could see it's like if i push it all the way up there'll be a little step like that or i'd have to put a bead on the bottom so when i weld it on i want to put it down just a little bit like put like a flat bar here and another thing I, you have to be careful for is now there's welds on the bottom so this thing's not sitting it's sitting up a little bit so if i was to put this on like that just clamp it down like that there's a little step in it so what i'm going to do is just stand it up there's a little step so it would like sit like this is this would be higher than this this would sit down a little so i'm just going to clamp a piece of flat bar on the back like that which i've had over here clamp that down I want to clamp on each side then we could clamp this right in the middle and that should make it perfectly flush up to the back because it won't be sitting on any welds back here so I'll show you how i do that so now i got it clamped on like that i can actually drop this side down a little bit but it's not sitting i would rather it down a little yeah that's better now lay it down like that get this piece on and that should be good now it feels like a lot better flush like it's sitting nice and flush now so there you go and i'll show you just take my clamp clamp it on it doesn't matter how clocked this is well it does a little bit but up the top doesn't matter and the gap doesn't matter i like to split it evenly but i want to take like a little flat bar like that and put it on and bring this piece down and butt it up against it that way it looks nice and even after i grind it and weld it pretty simple got it on now i took this little piece right here held it on moved brought that piece down and like butt it up flush against there and clamped it at the same time and just make sure i don't wiggle this piece around or to clamp around because it is possible to do that and move it but looks pretty good right there just going to get the welder out and we're going to start to tack it i switched my thing over this is what i like to use for aluminum my aluminum setup and just the number six uh standard cup and collet and everything with an eighth inch tungsten but these are little things i'm working on got these little bung things that i gotta put in here and weld them look at ground down after and a little end cap on the end i'm just doing that so kind of cool i got like 10 or something of those to do and a little bit more work but here's like the hole not that you guys might want to see this but 
There's a little bungs that go in the hole. A little end cap that gets welded on. Kind of cool. Somebody dipped the tungsten heavily. There, didn't bother sharpening it again. All right, I had to get a new piece of tungsten and put that in there by like number eight or three thirty second tungsten laser tungsten number eight cup and a gas lens on there. And here's the tungsten I've been using. Uh, CK Worldwide's the laser. I've tried that out. I like two percent lanthanated the blue, but like this because you can run it on AC and DC and just nice to have like one color tungsten instead of having a bunch of them. So there you go. And it even works for transformer machines too if you need to. But it seems to be working pretty good holding up for heat and stuff. But anyway, here we go. Big thing is make sure you grab a uh, type 316. Make sure your wire says 316 on it too. And we'll get going. Four simple tack welds. I like to put one in each corner if I can, and that should be pretty good. All right, pretty good with that. I got it tacked on that side, tacked on this side. Now I can show you a little trick, which it won't really matter for this because I'm going to be grinding it down. It's pretty thick. So I want to put a little bit more heat in there since I don't have that big of a bevel on there. I want to put a little bit more heat on, make sure it penetrates a little bit into that gap. So I'm just going to get a piece of aluminum and put it on the back side when I weld it. So it'd be a little uh, heat sink backer thing, whatever you want to call it. So I just go over to my little pile over here. I got a little shin pile and stuff. And somebody was digging through this the other day and didn't put the stuff back when they were done. Now I'm missing some stuff, but here's this one's a little dirty, but that's all right for this project. Got more stuff down there, but a little thick piece of aluminum I like to keep. And I'll just, when you get this set up right there, Clamp it right to the back like that and that helps pull the heat out a little bit and if it was thinner and it was going to penetrate a little bit more instead of put like a purge thing behind it it'll help it from sugaring on the back side it protects the world a little bit so that's what we're just going to do it's always good to save little blocks like that when you can and just keep them like neat and handy like this or something just say as a shim some people weld on it sometimes. You gotta be careful of that. I like to use them as shims or little clamp things like I used or something like that. It's a little tip for you. Now we'll get to the welding. I'm just taking it slowly right here. Um, if this part was critical, it'd be good to bevel it, but this ain't that big of a deal. So just filling in a little hole, whatever you want to call it. So just taking it slow. Letting that heat sink in there a little bit, putting a dab, kind of like pulsing it, and might explain it more in a second, but pulsing it, adding a dab, let it cool, and go from there. Doesn't have to look super pretty because it's all going to get ground back down. Just don't get it too hot, and make sure you fill it up with no holes or crater curls in it, and there you go. All right, there we go. We got that side welded, and they had a little grind mark there, and I noticed when I was heat welding it, it was opening up a little on our grind mark, so I just went over that really fast. No big deal. Now, show you on the back side. I'll wire brush that in a minute. So, actually, I don't have to, but hang on. Aluminum plate will be really, really hot. So, just, I mean, it's still coloring on the back side, but prevents any burn through from happening or sugaring on the back side. Copper and brass is better to use, but aluminum's the next best thing, pretty much, I think. But not too bad. And it definitely helped pull some heat out. So, Really didn't need it for this one, but I just wanted to show you a little trick. Would probably be good to wire brush this before I weld it, but it's not too bad. I will give it a little wire brush. Here's my little Wahootis contraption. Just a stainless steel wheel on a drill. Little arbor thing I made. And you could use like all thread or a bolt and cut it off, but make sure your wheel is stainless steel though. Not the best clean right now with one hand, but ready to weld. I'm not worried about looks of this thing. I wish I had my microphone. I was got a microphone I want to order for the phone. Got one for my GoPro, but um, when I'm welding to talk to you how I'm doing it, but I'm not worried about looks or anything, but I'm kind of pulsing it and I'm just sitting there for a second, letting that heat build in and drop. You'll see it drop when it gets to a certain temperature. Put my wire in and holding it and letting it fill up. Then like backing off the pedal a little bit 
and kind of pulsing it and moving up and doing the same thing. Just a little technique I'm just doing, making sure that it gets in there because as you could see on here, it's got a good little groove that it's got to go into. So it's a little harder, like if you just put a little light pass over it, it might not be as much penetration. So I'm just trying to get a little more penetration. Here's another tip for you too, whenever you're using a wire and it's labeled, always keep that that thing like don't use that just use your one end and always make sure you're just using this end up like this don't turn both ends off because if you're going to put it back and you don't use the whole thing you won't know what type of wire it is so good to do that anyway i'm going to try getting a little zoom in on you i don't know if you'll be able to see that or not i might back out a little bit and hopefully you'll see it all right and here we go back to the welding most of you probably know stainless steel you want to go a little quicker than with carbon steel just so it doesn't put too much heat into the part, but it's pretty thick part, quarter inch. It's not a big deal with this. Just don't get it super red and toasty, but there you go. Just going slowly, putting a dab in it. Just going a little bit slower than normal too, because I want that heat to sink in that crack. And again, I've mentioned it before, if this was critical, you would probably want to bevel that part, but in this case, it's not that big of a deal. We could get it in there and good to go. I mean, not too, complicated here or anything um just voiceover in it as we go along i wish i had a microphone i'm going to try getting one for my phone that's what this was recorded on and that way i could talk to you while i'm welding it because i probably had stuff that i wanted to say that i didn't get to say and there you have that little weld probably should have put that aluminum on the back side but with that weld there it won't sit flat so it really didn't matter but it's all right let this cool down for a minute uh, and then I'll just bring it to the grinder and just grind it down and we'll blend it down after. This is where I like my little cordless fan because I don't like putting water on it even though it might be fine with stainless but I'm not too sure but I know you can cool it down with the fan and help cool it so just let that blow there for a second. While that's cooling down I'll just show you what I'm going to be using to blend it. I'm going to just use a uh, like a 60 grit flap disc on a grinder and just grind that down and then almost all the way flush there'll still be some scratches in it and i'll try just going over it with this after it should be pretty fine like that and then maybe a a hand scotch right after and then afterwards i can oak it for them make it passivated and everything which i don't think it needs to it's going to probably be buried in a pit somewhere but we'll see Okay, all cooled down. We're going to get ready to start grinding it. I was just looking at it. And one thing I noticed, I didn't put my rounded edge of the flat bar up like how this is. If you see that. Which I don't think I had a rounded edge on that plate anyway. But I noticed that. So if you wanted it to be super perfect, you might have to put a weld on here. And grind it down perfectly. Because it might be just a hair under, maybe. We'll see afterwards, but just want to be careful grinding those tacks down. You don't put a little divot in there. And for what this is, it's going to be perfectly fine. They just want that little hole blocked up. But if you wanted it super, super perfect looking, then something to think about. But here we go. And like always, I don't like to grind on my welding table. I like to walk 10 feet over and just put it here. That way all my dust isn't going over there. And here's your fun part, grinding it. Just make sure you let your part cool down if you can before grinding it. It goes a lot better and don't let it get too hot. I think I mentioned this too. Don't let it get too hot. Otherwise it kind of hardens and it's a lot harder to take that weld down. I like to do is you could be a little aggressive or I like to be a little aggressive for the first like three quarters of that weld. And once I get down to that last little bit, like that last quarter, then I'll just lightly go over it, blend it. And then once I get it like pretty close, then I'll just sweep that whole area and make it look clean like I did over there and go from there you don't want to be too aggressive with that so just be careful and you don't want the part to get too hot because if it gets starts getting too hot like if this was thinner you might want to stop and let it cool down a little bit otherwise it could distort your metal or something I can already tell just watching the video how I should have let it cool down for a couple minutes before keep going at it like this because it's a little too hot right now and it just kind of doesn't want to go anymore. So if you let it cool down, it'll grind a lot easier. Sorry, I had a customer come in, but I did two things wrong. One thing was it was getting too hot and when it gets, especially stainless, when it gets too hot, the weld kind of gets a little hard and it hardens a little bit. So 
really got to let it cool down. Like I noticed it was getting a little harder to grind off and that weld that was going this way. I turned the grinder and tried getting it that way to make it a little easier. And that just puts opposite grooves in there, which you can see a little bit more. And I shouldn't have done that, but I did. And it just takes a little bit more grinding to go back this way with the grooves and make it go that way. But I should have let it cool down, but being this thick of a part and not crucial, I just went with it anyway. So just keep an eye out for that and always keep your grain going in the same way or be careful when you do that. And I got my roundedness pretty good. It really looks good like that, but I'm gonna go my one step farther with this wheel. And I'm just gonna do this whole section right here, blend that whole section in, and then same thing over there, and we'll see how that goes. Yeah, these are nice wheels to have. You could Google Amazon three inch non-woven flap wheels or scotch brake wheels, and I think you'll find some results and go from there, Amazon, other and places. And there you have it. You could go over it a little bit more and get a little better if you want, but for what this is, it's perfectly fine see it looks pretty good you could still see a little area where it's a little dark or like shiny or whatever from that flap disc but not too bad and give it a week or so especially if it's underground or whatever you won't notice it at all so pretty good I didn't make this thing but i just noticed where was it one thing when you're welding see how this guy didn't wrap this corner all the way around that's one thing you should do like they did over here but make sure, I mean, it's pretty close to all the way around, but if you can, like, don't just stop when you're welding, stop right there, stop right there and leave that unwelded. Cause if you do that little thing, it helps prevent cracking and it just makes it a lot stronger. One tip I learned a while ago, but a little tip for you guys. Now here's my debate. Do I oakite it out there with that or not? I guess I will, can't hurt. All right, um, I was going to get gloves to clean that part and he showed up and to pick it back up and i he didn't say he said don't worry about cleaning it or anything so i didn't really get a chance to do my little outro video but i think i showed you the final product of it so hopefully i did but um hopefully you guys liked it be sure to like subscribe comment and share and watch the ads because i get paid now for some ads that you watch if you watch the whole thing or whatever but i understand if you don't want to I wouldn't want to. You know, this is the end of the video and you won't see it, but on the next one, I guess. Maybe I gotta add this more in the beginning, too. But anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know what you would have done differently on that or something, but we'll see you on the next one. Chris Monarski, over and out.